My request to all the viewers watching this video would be to open the chapter The Red Trap Seller to enable you to let the session sink inside you. Hello dear children, welcome to Superior English. This is Simi Kaur. Wake up to this interesting session of Flamingo, The Rat Trap Seller by Selma Lejelov, a remarkable Swedish writer. This session of Superior English is a little different. Of course, you will find it distinct and unique. Now you'll ask me how. Alright, the answer is because I have 1. Discussed the chapter at length. 2. Extracted the important lines and analyzed them perfectly. 3. Stressed on the usage of synonyms and par words to make your answers more impactful. 4. Questions like why and how are answered. 5. The underlying message of the story is emphasized upon to render justice to the purpose of writing it. Alright, let me begin the story like a story. Once upon a time, there was a rat trap seller. How was he? I mean his appearance, his character and personality. A woe-begone man, a sad and miserable man, in tattered clothes, sunken cheeks, hungry and desolate, who is always plodding, trudging and staggering. What is plodding, trudging and staggering, children? It is walking slowly and heavily. These three words are used to describe the manner of walk of the red trap seller. We walk normally, don't we? But this man would drag himself with slow and heavy steps. Why? It was because this poor man was always tired and hungry. Please refer to the first line of the second para of the chapter. No one can imagine how sad and monotonous life can appear to such a vagabond who plods along the road left to his own meditation. Similarly, you will find the words trudging and staggering in the chapter. Please use these words instead of the word walking to describe the rat trap seller better. The rat trap seller is looked down by people and of course, this is nothing new. Everybody salutes the rising sun. How was his life, children? His life was sad and monotonous. What is monotonous? Dull, boring, uninteresting, repetitive. And what did he do to break this monotony and overcome the feeling of rejection and being looked down by people? He started visualizing, thinking the whole world to be a big rat trap which offered bait to the people. What is bait? Bait is a trap various forms of temptations. The trap could be in the form of wealth, land, glamour, power, pelf, anything. And anyone who fell a prey, what is prey? Victim. Anyone who fell a prey to these temptations closed the door of happiness for themselves and were forever enclosed in a world of misery and unhappiness. Now what kind of personality this peddler had? The peddler had a sadistic personality. Who is a sadist? A sadist is a person, children, who derives pleasure in hurting and insulting others, in giving them pain or discomfort. So this red trap seller derived sadistic pleasure in thinking of these people who were unkind to him as ones who were enclosed in the rat trap. And this activity became his favorite pastime. Now children, you must have observed that I have used the word peddler instead of rat trap seller. Who is a peddler? A peddler is someone who peddles or sells something by traveling to different places. So the rat trap seller was a peddler because he used to sell rat traps by going to different places. He is also called a vagabond because he had no fixed shelter and knocked the door of the old crofter to spend the night. The red trap seller has been given various names in various contexts and under various circumstances. For example, when he goes to the old crofter's house, he is called a stranger. 
when he's spotted by the mill owner, he's seen as a ragamuffin and an old regimental comrade. So, dear children, use these terms to describe the red trap seller according to the condition he is placed into. All right. Since he is a vagabond, a wanderer who has no fixed place to stay, he was looking for a place to spend the night when he saw a cottage and knocked the door. An old man opened the door and welcomed him warmly. The lonely old man was happy to see a visitor and served him dinner happily. They smoked, played cards and chit-chatted. During the conversation, the old man spoke about his crofter days in Ramsjo Ironworks and now he was happily surviving by virtue of his cow whose milk he sold in the creamery and recently he received 30 kronor in payment. What is a kronor children? It is a Swedish currency. Now on hearing 30 kronor, the stranger gave an expression of disbelief. So the crofter went to the window, took down a leather pouch which hung on a nail in the very window frame and picked out the 30 kronor and showed it to the stranger. Next morning, both set out in their own ways. But the red trap peddler returned to smash the window pane and get hold of the pouch containing 30 kronor. After stealing the money, the red trap seller took the forest route instead of the public highway for the obvious reason that he had committed a crime. After walking for some time, he realized that he was lost in the thick, dark forest. Suddenly, suddenly a realization dawns on him. And what is that realization? That he is now himself fallen a prey to the bait offered by the world and been caught in the rat trap. What was the bait, children? The bait was 30 kronors. He sank on the ground, tired, exhausted, utterly helpless, Miser miserable and grief-stricken. He could see his end drawing near. Hey, what was that? A hard thumping sound, which meant an iron mill was nearby. He summoned, gathered all his strength and staggered in that direction. The peddler finally managed to reach the iron mill opened the gate and entered the forge. What is a forge, children? It is a place where metal is shaped by heating it on fire and hammering it. After taking permission from the blacksmith, the tramp settled down near the furnace to warm himself in the cold December evening. A little later, the owner of the ironworks came on his nightly round of inspection. On seeing the ragamuffin, he went close to him and what? Give a cry of surprise. But of course it is you, Nils Olof. The quite surprised red trap seller did not show any sign of not recognizing the iron master. Why? With the hope of getting some kronors from him. Yes, God knows things have gone downhill. Anyways, the Iron Master was very happy to see his old regimental comrade. Probably they were in the same regiment in the armed forces. He now insisted that his comrade should accompany him to his house and celebrate Christmas with him. Instead of being happy at the invitation offered, the rat trap seller vehemently refused. Why? It was because he had stolen the old crofter's money and feared that if caught, will be handed over to the police. But the Iron Master was not a person to give up so easily. And now he thought of sending his daughter to do the persuading part and was confident that she would succeed in accomplishing her purpose. Sure enough, a short time later, Adla Wilmanson, daughter of the Iron Master, alighted from the carriage, went up to the stranger and put her request of him coming to their house for the Christmas so lovingly, affectionately and convincingly that the stranger agreed instantly. The most important part was that, children, that she put his fears and apprehensions to rest by assuring that he could leave their house whenever he so desired. 
The next morning was Christmas Eve. The Iron Master excitedly waited to see his old regimental comrade and get the satisfaction of talking about the good old days they spent together in the army. The door opened. Hey, what was this? The man standing in front of him, all clean and well dressed, was not his old acquaintance but a total stranger. Shocked and completely taken aback, the Iron Master shouted at him. The stranger remained calm and did not react. He clarified that he never wanted to accompany the Iron Master to his manor. But the owner of the mill was not convinced and threatened to hand him over to the sheriff. Upon this, the tramp, no children, the rat trap seller is called a tramp here because his identity is exposed. That he is not the old regimental comrade but a tramp. On hearing this, the tramp lost his temper, thumped the table with his fist and declared, Now I am going to tell you, Mr. Iron Master, how things are. He said, this whole world is nothing but a big rat trap. All the good things that are offered to you are nothing but cheese rinds and bits of pork set out to drag a poor fellow into trouble. And if the sheriff comes now and locks me up for this, then you, Mr. Iron Master, must remember that a day may come when you yourself may want to get a big piece of pork and then you will get caught in the trap. The Iron Master laughed and asked the stranger to get out of his house at the earliest. The poor stranger prepared to go, but guess what? Edla Wilmanson intervened and insisted that he should stay put for Christmas. She could not simply bear the very idea of persuading the man to come for Christmas and then humiliating him by showing him the door. Besides, Christmas was an occasion of happiness, blessing and cheer. Providing someone happiness should be one's aim and not agony and content. This was Adla Wilmanson's belief. So she took the decision of giving at least one day of happiness and peace to this poor hungry wretch who had a whole year of torture, agony and hardships to his fate. The Iron Master had no choice but to agree because his daughter did have logic to her credit. Then she took the stranger by the hand and led him to the table to have breakfast. The entire Christmas Eve passed off smoothly when the stranger did nothing but sleeping and eating. In the evening, after the delightful dinner, the stranger went forward to thank the Iron Master and his daughter for the wonderful day. The young girl warmly accepted his thanksgiving and reciprocated by requesting him to accept the suit which he has had been given on the first day as a Christmas present and that if in future he ever wanted a safe and peaceful Christmas, he could always come in the Ramshaw manor any time. The rat trap seller was speechless because this kindness, in fact this empathy was something he had never ever received from anybody. He had always been hated, despised and shunned. This benevolent attitude of Edla touched every chord of his heart. The next morning, the Iron Master and his daughter departed for the church for the early Christmas service without disturbing the peddler who was sleeping. While they were returning after the service, the young girl sat dejected. Why? What was the reason that the young girl was sad? It was because in the church she had learned that one of the old crofters of Ramshaw Iron Works had been robbed by a man who went around selling rat traps. The Iron Master of course, did not leave any opportunity of playing the blame game. He accused Edla of bringing the imposter into the house and by now he must have 
stolen all their silver spoons. As soon as they arrived, the valet informed them that the fellow had gone and that he had not taken anything with him. On the contrary, he had left behind a little package as a Christmas present for Miss Wilmanson. The young girl opened the package, which was done up so messily that the contents were clearly visible. Edla gave a cry of joy. Why? Why do you think Edla gave a cry of joy, children? It was because in the package was a small rat trap and in it lay three wrinkled ten kronor notes which the poor peddler had honestly returned. Edla was touched by this gesture and relieved that she was not robbed of her trust for the red trap seller. This was not all. There was also a letter which of course added personal touch. The content of the letter ran thus. Honoured and noble miss, since you have been so nice to me all day long, and as if I was a captain, I want to be nice to you in return, as if I was a real captain. For I do not want you to be embarrassed at this Christmas season by a thief. But you can give back the money to the old man on the roadside, who has the money pouch hanging on the window frame as a bait for poor wanderers. The rat trap is a Christmas present from a rat who would have been caught in the world's rat trap if he had not been raised to captain because in that way he got power to clear himself. Written with friendship and high regard, Captain Bond's tale. In the letter, there is again a word in which the rat trap seller is describing himself. The rat trap is a Christmas present from a rat who would have been caught in this world's rat trap if he had not been raised to captain. So here he is describing himself as a rat. Why is he describing himself as a rat here, children? It is because as a rat is trapped in the rat trap by falling a prey to the bait, so is the peddler when he falls a prey to 30 kronor and closes the door of happiness for himself. So children, what does the story mean to you? Or rather, what is the underlying message of the story? That the essential goodness in a human being can be awakened through understanding and love. No man is bad. No man is bad. It is the circumstances which make him bad. And by emotionally empathizing with such a person, one can help him turn into a new leaf. This brings us to the end of the session. Hope it enables you to learn this chapter, The Rat Trap Seller, in an effortless and pleasurable way. Please feel free to express your doubts and queries, children. Do give a thumbs up if you like the session and please go ahead and subscribe. Thank you so much.